Starting with the back of the Irish Independent this morning, and that is a picture of TJ Reid uh, <coughs> being fouled uh, alongside Johnny Cohen. Yeah, sub Johnny Cohen came on and um, helped turn the game in Galway's favour. Tribe show true grit, but cynical display demonstrates why hurling badly needs a black card rule. Yeah, I mean, I think that hurling fans aren't thinking that we need a black card after that game. They're thinking, what a great game. As opposed to we need a black card. But anyway, um, the black, does the black card, has it actually done the thing it was supposed to do? Or did people just decide, I'll continue to foul cynically and won't get a black card if this is at an important time of the game? It, doesn't, it hasn't changed the game at all, has it? Not really. So well, doubling down on your mistake doesn't seem like a good idea for me. And actually hurting seems fine. There was like loads of yellow cards and there was a couple of reds, three reds. So happy days, everybody got punished who was supposed to be punished. I think the point is that you'd much rather see the forward go in and get to a one-on-one -on -one position with the goalkeeper rather than being pulled out and we have to watch TJ Reid tap over 25 frees per game. Yeah, but Paul Murphy did exactly that and conceded a goal. So would he have been happier getting sent off earlier if he hadn't conceded the goal? I don't know, it's hard to tell. I think that's kind of a less common situation, the, the Paul Murphy one, isn't it? I think in most situations... He'd already been booked in that, in that scenario, so maybe it is. Uh, McElroy storms the Canadian title with stunning 61. McDowell holds nerve at last to book his place at the Open. It's great news for Greg McDowell. It would have been a real pain if he'd missed out on the Open uh, in Portrush. Uh, Mick, he had a cold beer last night. <laughs> Mick happy to sacrifice style for results. If it ends in a scrappy 1-0, I'm not bothered. Well, you should be, because goal difference matters. It's a real thing, right? So we were supposed to try and score goals mm -hmm. and against the shittiest team in the group. Yeah, the goal difference is, is, might not matter. Kildare's 15-point defeat, not a catastrophe, says O'Neill on page 62-63. This is in the Indo this morning. Um, funny, the Indo don't report on the <clears throat> fact that Keane O'Neill had a go at them. Nope, can't see it anywhere. Nope, can't see it anywhere. Uh, the Times had it online, but I can't see it in the papers today. Maybe this is just a different... It is. It's definitely on a, in a couple of the back pages, which we'll get to in a moment. Like, yeah, catastrophe. It's like knowing a catastrophe is going to happen. Does that lessen the fact that it's a catastrophe? No, I it mean... It probably uh, does, to be uh, fair. So, uh, no, I don't know, because, like, look at Longford with their restorative victory over Carlo. What, what was the name... Would rather be? What was that name of the big blimp in Germany that uh, guy that fell at flame? Yeah. Like, I mean, would, would that have been as much of a catastrophe if everybody known was going to, It obviously would have been, so... I mean, yeah, uh, loads of people uh, burned to a horrible, well, hideous uh, hydrogen death. Obviously. That's my point. I'm saying it is. Even if, even if you know a catastrophe is going to happen, <laughs> okay. it's still a catastrophe. The, the mass murder of... Uh, well, not quite murder, but like... Oh, conspiracy theorists... Certainly manslaughter. Is, when you uh, put hydrogen in a balloon, what the hell do you expect is going to happen? It's massively flammable. It's like... Like, the comparison is I'm so... I'm going to have this balloon of acid float over a city. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> The funding of Dublin GA is the balloon of acid in this situation. We, kn we knew it was going to happen yesterday. It's still a catastrophe. The, the front page of the Irish Examiner Sports section is Banner Bailout, Limerick Crush, Shambolic Clare, but could prove their summer decider. Leinster ignites then, Galway find old form, but no one's writing off Kilkenny just yet. And Kearns KO, tip boss departs after qualifier loss in Newry. Great stint, really, you can look back on for William Kearns as Tipperary Manager 2016, getting them to an All-Ireland football semi-final. Had that great night out at the All-Stars where you uh, buttonholed him and his wife drunkenly tell them how much you love them? That's, uh, that's simply not true. <laughs> that was the Phillips Sports Manager of the Year. Okay, course. right, okay, sorry, yeah, right, sorry. My, my, my facts were incorrect. Um, win or butts? <laughs> the Irish Sun had the word butts on their back page, everybody. You can expect uh, childish giggling for the rest of the show as a result of that. Canada Spry, do you get it? Canada Spry? This is over your head, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, it's a specific moment in time. Canada Spry. Canada Dry? Oh, okay. That's right. It's Canada Dry like a, a Lynx, bottle of Lynx? No, it's a drink. It's oh. like ginger ale. It was like it? the most famous global brand of ginger ale for about 15 years in the 80s. Then what happened? Nashes got into the mix? Uh, I don't know. But the, the factory closed down the tie, and that was um, a lot of jobs went. Roy McElroy warmed up for next week's US Open by winning the Canadian Open in style, hence the Canada Spry headline that is going over the head of all the millennials. O'Neill's Fury to the tabloids are reporting this because they've managed not to be part of the thing that he's angry about, even though I'd say they were all doing the same stuff. Keen O'Neill insists the comments he made prior to yesterday's defeat to Dublin were misconstrued after Kildare's Leinster quarterfinal win over Longford. O'Neill said aside are going to win against the Dubs, but he explained it was we were going up there to win, not we're going to win, which is fair enough. And then Jarley Ori for Orchard. So Orla Bannon has this story on the back page. 
of the Irish Sun, which is really worrying, but we just need to check into some of the details of it. Our man midfielder, Jarley Ogburns, left Clonus in an ambulance after yesterday's Ulster semi-final replay defeat by Cavan. The 20-year-old is believed to have been still suffering the effects of a concussion injury picked up in the drawn game last week. GA rules state players must not return to action for at least seven days after diagnosis. Yesterday was the seventh day. So, um, just reading up a bit about this. Uh, Armagh insisted in the aftermath of the game last week, according to a piece in the Irish News that ran on the 4th of June, so six days ago, last Tuesday. Armagh have insisted Jarlath Oak Burns wasn't concussed during the game last week. There was some con confusion after the game about the exact nature of the injury that saw him withdrawn from the action during the early stages of extra time. Uh, he suffered an accidental blow to the head following a collision with one of his own players. He was replaced by Charlie Vernon, and although initially a blood sub, Armagh decided against bringing him back on. Um, the Armagh assistant boss, Jim McCarry, said Burns was a wee bit fuzzy before later commenting that it wasn't the full concussion, but we thought it best not to put him back in. Right, okay, so he made a, a decision at that point that it wasn't the full concussion. Was that based on his evidence or was it based on medical evidence? That's the thing we need to find out here. Well, there's no such thing as a mild concussion. You're exactly. either concussed or you're not. It's, it's black like and white a, thing. Yeah, there's like a thing that your brain is either injured or it isn't. And a wee bit fuzzy after a collision to the head would suggest that um, they are concussive symptoms. And so yeah. that's the type of thing. And they, they thought at that stage that he was bad enough not to put him back in, but they're saying that he wasn't concussed. So um, this doesn't look good for Armagh. No. The fact that he is rushed from the pitch in an ambulance straight after the game is, is very, very unusual. But like, I'd like to know exactly what the reasoning was for at the time. Is, is Jarley Oak saying, I'm not feeling well here, I need to get out of here, I need to get to the hospital? Or is it somebody on the sideline who's actually spotting further symptoms, further fuzziness or whatever it may be and saying, you actually need to go get yourself checked out? Because if it is the latter, then you'd wonder why that wasn't picked up on during the week. Like you'd imagine they trained during the week, obviously it wouldn't have been too much of a, of a strenuous thing given the fact that it, it, there was only a, a seven day turnaround between games. And clearly, like not in this situation, but overall, like I, I do wonder the, the idea of having the exact parameter of saying, right, you have to serve seven days before you get back. I wonder is that being seen as a target by people? rather than a guideline, because that shouldn't be a target. It shouldn't be like, right, you serve your seven days, uh, you must be okay, get back out there. Everybody's brain operates differently, everybody's got different rates of recovery. And it's an interesting case study to see what's actually gone on here. As I, as I say, I'm not saying for one second that RMR specifically saw that as a target, but I do wonder if other teams look at the seven days and say, listen, once you hit your seven days, you're going to be fine again, which clearly just isn't good medical procedure. No, and, and you know, um, the fact that it has happened again and that he's gone to hospital as a result of it is something that Armagh are going to have to explain. And you would hope that everybody gets involved in this conversation, up to and including the GPA, going, what happened here? What are the... Because, look, people make mistakes in the heat of championship. Bad decisions can sometimes get made. And I'm not saying that this is a necessarily a bad decision. Maybe he didn't appear to be concussed, mm. even though they took him off because of a knock to the head and he appeared fuzzy, which would you know, suggest that it's all the hallmarks of a concussion. Um, somehow that becomes, no, he's not concussed later on in the week to he's then playing and then suffers an injury which, for which he's rushed to hospital in the aftermath of the game. So, you know, um, it, it, you'd hope that it's a teaching moment, but, like, these teaching moments were supposed to have happened last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. So somehow, somewhere along the way, the message isn't getting through. And I'd say the Burns family are a little bit concerned about this too because... You know, um, I'm reading a story here from 2016 where uh, he was concussed in a school <coughs> game, but at that stage the referee took him off. So, um, you know, especially people with a history of concussion, if it hasn't, if it's re-emerging, you kind of would always be anxious about that because a concussion is a brain injury. Like, let's not beat around the bush. A concussion is a brain injury, and if you if you suffer a concussion, you need to be very careful about your return to play and about managing that injury if it happens to you again in the future. So uh, there is a duty of care here that everybody has to be careful about and that, again, you hope that the players are getting the representation that they need and that this conversation happens at a very wide level. So no doubt Armagh had the best of intentions 
Um, and we but, have put in uh, a request just for comment on it from Armagh, just to clarify exactly what happened, the order of events here, and what symptoms he was suffering before he got into that ambulance yesterday. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some response to that. Uh, the Times this morning goes with the hurling as their main picture. Limerick crushed the neighbours' hopes. Their main story on the back page, though, is United fail in their bid for Juan Bissaka. So Manchester United have failed in a £40 million bid for Aaron Juan Bissaka at the Crystal Palace. Right back, they value him at £65 million. So Manchester United clearly, uh, as we could see from the, the Daniel James signing recently for £18 million, are trying to restructure things, pressing the reset button maybe a tad too strong, but are certainly not prepared to splash the cash as heavily as they used to. So will this splash out on £65 million quid for a 21-year-old right-back? It would seem like the Manchester United of old. That being said, this does seem like the next excellent, at the very least, right back in English football and uh, Manchester City supposedly interested as well Chelsea also interested so there's going to be a bit of a battle for wan over the next couple of weeks you'd imagine uh, Here we go uh, front of the Irish Daily Mail now Guinness sees red over Paddy Jackson so Guinness are um, one of the main sponsors of London Irish this is an exclusive by Ali Bracken Guinness has warned it has serious concerns over London Irish signing controversial former Ireland rugby star Paddy Jackson the drinks giant's parent company Diageo has told the Irish Daily Mail it will meet the club this week to discuss the decision which is not consistent with our values. Guinness have sponsored London Irish for almost 30 years and the move will renew focus on the decisions of the club led by former Ireland coach Declan Kidney uh, to hire the controversial out half. The Racing Post this morning goes with Hill Prime's Ascot Big Shots as he targets Dream Star. That's regarding Charlie Hills and he said tactics will be different uh, in the King's Stand Stakes this year. The back page then is ready to rock. Gibraltar could crumble late on as Ireland get into gear. It's a 7.45 kick-off tonight at Aviva. It'll be a 3-0 in, won't it? Uh, the back page of the Daily right. Mail is sly and devious coverage angers O'Neill. So Keane O'Neill thought that the coverage of his uh, post-match comments after the Longford game were sly and devious in particular, talking about the Irish Indo and the Irish Times. And don't mess up, nothing but a win will do for Ireland. Uh, the hurdled 100 not out. Gavin Hale, Centurion Cluxton. Rory races to victory as Larry is second. Scrappy win suits me fine, says Mick. Yeah, Shane Larry had a great week, like completely overshadowed, but he had an absolutely great week. And it's like, oh, he's sort of 61 in the final round. Come on, thanks a million, Rory. Um, we had a picture from uh, the inner city. This is uh, a lot of dubs will have seen this. You could probably show him to clip it and zoom it in a little bit. What exactly does it say? Uh, I cannot read that from here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's five in a row, let's go. Is that what it is? Five in a row, let's go. Uh, up no, the here we go, five in a row. Okay. Up the dubs. It's on the side of a pub. It's on the side of the Wellington, uh, House. The Wellington House. Well, like, they may as well do it. Do, may they? May, you like may, to, may they well? Why, I, why, I, I, I thought Jim it's... Gavin's driving into work on Africa. I've got one big issue with this. Like they're going to have to replace that next year for six, the year after for seven, the year after for eight, the year after for nine. So they really aren't saving themselves any money there. They should just go at nine. Just put, here we go, nine in a row and just be done with us. They're the first <coughs> ones out. I mean, I'm surprised that multiple bookmakers haven't already paid out in the five in a row, just as that publicity stunt, given that it's, you know, it's June now, be no harm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you'd actually save money as well. People will probably lump on with huge amounts of money over the next couple of weeks because the inevitability of Dublin winning five in a row is just becoming more and more apparent. It wasn't a good weekend for uh, the various <coughs> teams that we had... Assumed number two in your power ranks, I believe, John were before throwing, were they? Yeah, because they'd shown, <coughs> excuse me, the second best form so far this year when it comes to. For once, I'm not having a dig at your power rankings. It's like, it's just that you were. Uh, like I said at the start of the year, that Donegal are the best team in Ulster. Like my opinion was that Donegal are a better team than Tyrone, but the power rankings isn't about opinion, it's not about me. Like, it isn't about me, it's about what the reality is, so... Okay. We'll update them tomorrow and uh, we can get stuck into it. Okay, very quickly. Like, the, uh, the, okay, well, I know we're going to get to Nathan, so I'll, I'll, I'll wait for a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, three more points to priority from McCarthy in Ireland is the headline on Emmett Malone's piece, the top of Sports Monday, the Irish Times. Magnificent McElroy wins by seven as Pebble Beach looms large. And to get through the mirror, I've got... Uh, win at all costs, lots of goals would be great, but what a victory will do for McCarthy. Centurion Cluxton hailed by Gavin. Um, maybe I did that already, did I? And the star is 2020 <coughs> Vision. Home comfort's key for Ireland. It's true. Jim backs Dubs fans, even though they're not showing up, because no fans are showing up, because it's the Lancer Championship, but it's meaningless now. Look, non exclusive. Claire had no character and no leadership. It was a total humiliation. 
Jared loves those columns though where it's his job to stick the boot into Clare. In fairness, he's right. Limerick 128, Clare 13 points. They were gutless according to Jared Lachnan. At the back page of the Guardian is a picture of Ellen White celebrating her goal against Scotland yesterday in the World Cup. They won 2-1. Phil Neville, not exactly a happy camper afterwards, as we can see on the front page of the Daily Telegraph, must do better as he channels his inner Phil Brown. Uh, Neville gives team public dressing down and demands improvement after victory in World Cup opener. He plans on being there till the very end, he says. I kind of like that, the bullish nature of uh, Phil Neville.